humming gently beside me is Porsche's first all-electric car. It's called the Taycan and it comes in turbo or turbo S form. That doesn't mean it's turbocharged, it means it's very, very fast. So let's see what it's like. So what is it and how fast is it? Well, we'll come to the how fast in a minute because it is ludicrously, ludicrously fast. And there's quite a lot to get through here. It is an electric vehicle. That much is pretty straightforward. It's on a new platform. It's Porsche's first electric vehicle, but will not be its last because there's going to be a sort of SUV version of this car late next year. And following that, the next generation Macan is going to be all electric. Following that, the 718 is likely to be electric. And in five years' time, Porsche reckons that 30 to 40 percent of all the cars it sells will be pure EVs. The 911 is tricky because traditionally it has an engine out the back and to replicate that in EV form you could do but it's part of the charm and it's a, it's a technical challenge but also it's a heritage challenge to do it to a 911. So my suspicion is the 911 will always be petrol electric hybrid or pure petrol in GT3, GT3 RS forms while the rest of the Porsche range migrates more and more towards pure electric vehicularity. For now though, the Taycan. Taycan is the proper name. I suspect we might end up calling it Taycan, but that's the way it is. It is a four or five seat, five door hatchback. Slightly smaller than a Panamera in Porsche's big graph of where all of their cars sit. But I suspect really you and I will not necessarily perceive it as smaller than a Panamera, especially when you bear in mind the price. At the moment it comes in Turbo and Turbo S forms because Turbo is a sub-brand, a trim level, as much as it is anything else. It's a signifier of performance. <laughs> and oh boy, does this car have performance. So in Turbo form, it has 680 PS, what's that, 670 something brake horsepower, and a little bit more than that in pounds foot of torque. This though is the Turbo S, which means it gets no less than 761 Yes, so 750 horsepower, which is phenomenal. Okay, so straight bit of road, nothing about, nobody on it. Just come to a standstill, foot on brake, foot on throttle. <laughs> That's 100 now, 100 kilometers now, 140. Just ridiculous, that's just ridiculous. It's one of those cars that makes your brain slightly frazzled when you put your foot flat on the throttle. It is absurdly fast. It is absurdly fast. There are two electric motors, one at the front, one at the back. The difference between the Turbo and the Turbo S for their performance, the Turbo S gets an extra inverter or a better inverter at the front, so it allows more power in those small moments. And it is small moments, but you don't need more than small moments to go fast in this car. 0 to 62, which is 100 kilometers an hour, is 2.8 seconds. 0 to 60, which Porsche also quotes unusually, uh, is 2.6, 2.6 seconds. 2.6 seconds is off the scale absurd. I haven't been in a car that does 60 in 2.6 seconds. I haven't been in a road car that does that anyway. Uh, 0 to 100 miles an hour in six something, standing quarter mile in 10.8. I mean, in terms of its straight line performance, the Taycan is off the scale. So between the front and rear electric motors and there's some boot space at the back, there's a small boot at the front and between it all is 95 kilowatt hours or thereabouts of battery. That's the same on, on all versions. And there will be, don't forget, uh, Turbo and Turbo S are a trim level. There'll be lesser trims than that later on, but this is what we're starting with. We're starting with the performance ones because that gives it the, the oomph. So the 95-ish kilowatt hour battery gives it a range, I think it's 93.4 kilowatt hours, gives it a range of between 260 and 280 miles, depending on whether it's the Turbo S or the, or the Turbo, the Turbo has a slightly longer range, and it can be recharged at up to 270 kilowatts. Now there was some talk earlier on that the Taycan could be recharged at 350 kilowatts. Porsche says, no, 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 we never said that. The Ionity chargers, which they have a relationship with, they can put out 350 kilowatts we always said that the Taycan would be able to be charged at more than 250. 270 is more than that. And 270 is a lot. I mean, you can put in 80% worth of charge in about 20 minutes, which is pretty good. You can get 100 kilometers of charge in, I don't know, six, seven minutes, something like that. So it's quick. And don't forget, they, they always claim this 
80% of charge thing because like filling a cup with water when you're charging battery you have to sort of ease off as you get to the top so that last bit of charge is what takes the long time. I mean the short of it is most people will charge at home overnight and then when they are out on the road and they're fast charging you'll zap in 80% worth in 20 minutes because that'll get you probably as far as you need to go. Tesla does this very well at the minute. A Tesla supercharger network makes sense, is easy to use and is quick. In the UK, there aren't loads of really fast ionity chargers, but there will be more. Porsche dealers will have them. The charging network will grow. Look, you know whether you can use a car of this type. It doesn't suit everybody just yet, but bear in mind, this car is 100 and 18 to 138,000 quid in turbo or turbo S forms. If you're spending that sort of money on a car, you've probably got another one. Driving experience wise, driving position wise, it's like a Porsche. I'm sitting dead straight. I have a round Alcantara trim steering wheel and that good Porsche thing where the bonnet dives away. I can see though these two little almost 918 spider style. Uh, bonnet haunches over the, over the wings which, which help place the car. Technologically there's loads on it. So it's four-wheel drive because of the motors. It has three chamber air springs which I can stiffen up or, or slacken off. It has Porsche stability control and roll control and all of that. There's a new pure digital dash which is very driver focused and I like quite a lot. Big central speedo and of course you know Porsche used to put a big rev counter in the middle. It doesn't have one of those, but it shows how much power is going where. It's really clear, it's really simple to use, slightly too much on touch screen, but such is the way of things. But it's a really sound driving environment. The steering is sort of medium weight, self centers nicely. I mean, it's just a good Porsche steering system. Nicer than a Panamera's, I would say. The ride is good at speed. It's air sprung, so a very occasionally at low speed when you get a really sharp surface imperfection, you get a little, you know, that sort of boom, boom, thud. But it's brilliantly controlled and at high speed it's good. The thing to remember, because batteries are heavy, this is a 600 and something, 600 and 650 kilo battery, which is a lot for a battery. That means the overall weight of the Taycan is 2,300 kilos. I mean, that's a lot of car, but it does have a very low centre of gravity. Porsche's lowest centre of gravity, even weight distribution pretty much front and rear. So it's, that makes it slightly easier to control the body movements than it would do, would be in a Panamera or a KN particularly. And you get a certain amount back through the steering. What you don't get inevitably is the involvement of smacking through gears and revving an engine like you would in a 911. But you don't get that either in a Panamera Turbo S Hybrid or KN Turbo S Hybrid. You know, the, the powertrain is, is there for those, but they're not always making an amazing noise. And in this, things are similar. It makes, it makes a whooshing noise. But what it also is, you know, yes, it lacks any sort of V80 goodness, but most of the time you don't hear that in a big car anyway. And what this does have is a really beautifully smooth power delivery. I get drive modes because it's a Porsche, why not? Range limits the top speed, which gives me a longer range if because I don't push it. Normal is pretty normal. Sport and Sport Plus, they use the twin speed gearbox at the rear. So you might thinking, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, as I was thinking, well, how, at what speed does it change up? What speed does it change down? Does it, does it change up and then? Well, if you're in, in normal, it's just always using the higher of two gears. But if you are in sport, and I'm doing 48 kilometers an hour, sounds more like the Swedish chef. That's with it off. With it on. It's cool. I like this car. I like this car very much. There's loads of legroom, not loads of headroom in the back. It feels really lovely inside. It feels like a Porsche, but it feels special. It feels different to uh, a Panamera or a KN or a 911, but not in a bad way, not in a weird way. It's just feels like it's moved things on. It just feels like a new generation of car. But it's, it's, it's fun, it's engaging, and it disguises that mass of which there is a lot 
rather well. I mean, the centre of gravity is, is low, but it steers, it grips, it turns. Not with huge agility, but it does it with enough involvement and enough engagement and loads of capability. I mean, Porsche makes the KN do astonishing things for an SUV. It's done exactly the same here for a car that weighs 2.3 tonnes. Is it fun? Yes. Is it a Porsche? Yes. Is it as much fun as a 911? Hell no. But then, nor is a KN or a Panamera. I don't think this is any less fun, any less of a Porsche, than either of those. So there are a lot of very good EVs, mostly SUVs at the minute on the market. The I-Pace would consider itself an SUV, the Audi and Mercedes the same, and Tesla does the X and, and the S. They're all very, very good. I like all of them a lot. But I think this one, I think the Porsche feels the most capable to drive, almost unquestionably, the most engaging. It feels perhaps the most special inside as well, actually. I think it's, I think it's really terrific. But an EV still doesn't work totally for everybody. But if they work for you and you want to spend a lot of money on one, I think this is the one to have. I think this is probably the world's best electric vehicle. And I also think it's just a really good, really good super sports saloon with any powertrain. I think it's a real triumph. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you click the little bell icon for post notifications, you'll never miss another Autocar video.